Welcome back, friends, to the Boston Children's Museum collection. Boy, have I got some great things to show you today. Let's get started. One of my favorite games to play is I Spy. Let's play with these items from our collection. The very first thing before we need to play is for you guys to take a look at all of the items that we have. I'm going to pick an object and you guys are going to have to guess which object it is based on the clues that I give you. You guys are the guessers. So maybe I might tell you something about the color, the shape, the material. You're going to have to pick. So look very closely at everything on my tray. And maybe some things look familiar to you too. I'll go first and you guess. I spy with my little eye something white. Can you guess which object it is? Is, is it, it a doll? doll? No, not the little white Russian doll. Is, is it, it the dice? dice? No, not the dice. Is, is it, it the, the teapot? teapot? Oh, the teapot. No, not the teapot. Is it that ocean? Yes, you're right. You got it. Let me tell you a little bit about this object. This is a whale's tooth. Can you believe it? Look how big it is. Do you see this drawing on it? This kind of drawing and scratching on whale's teeth has a special name. It's called scrimshaw. Can you say scrimshaw five times fast? The reason it has its own name is because it was a very popular kind of art for a very specific kind of person. Do you know anyone who knows where to find whale's teeth? Why whalers, of course. Back over 200 years ago, Whaling was a popular job for boys. To be a whaler, you joined a ship hunting for whales. Whaling is going out to sea and catching whales for meat, blubber, and oil. But the rest of the whale, the teeth, and sometimes the bones, were not very valuable. So many sailors were able to keep them. And guess what they used them for? They used them like we use paper, to draw. But when you're drawing on a whale's tooth, you can't use a pen to draw. You have to carve your designs onto the tooth. And so whalers would use a pocket knife or a needle, something sharp, to carve their designs on the tooth. Once they finished, in order to color it in, they would use squid ink or gunpowder, sometimes leftover oil mixed with coal, rub it into their marking, and that's how you could see the lines on the tooth. If you look very closely, you can see that there are a lot of lines here and that everything is very detailed, which probably means it took a very long time to make. But that's okay because whalers were out at sea for years. If they were lucky, it would only be a year and a half. If they weren't lucky, they were out at sea, living on their ship for three years. And it doesn't mean you see a whale every day. The whalers had a lot of time to make their carvings, which means they thought very specifically about what they wanted to draw. If you were out at sea, away from your family and friends, what would you carve? Maybe it'd be a picture of your grown-ups, or your pet, or everything that you see around you. One more time. I spy with my little eye an animal. Can you find it? Is it, is it the rooster? rooster? No, not the rooster. Is it, is the, it beetles? the beetles? No, not the scarab beetles. Is it, is it the bear? 
Yes! That's right. I was thinking of the dog fan. Do you know why someone would put a dog on a fan? Usually because they love them. Do you ever wear something with an animal on it? Maybe it's your favorite animal. Maybe it looks like your pet. Maybe you just like animals and it's fun to show it off. This fan with this dog on it is even more special because of the type of dog on it. Do you know what this dog's breed is? It's called a Pekingese and they are from China. They were bred only in Beijing, which during the 1800s was called Peking, which is where the name came from. The legend goes that the Pekingese was created by the Buddha, who shrunk a lion down to dog size. The Pekingese dogs were so special and sacred to the people of China that only the imperial court, the emperor who ruled the land and his family could own them. That is, until the five dogs living in the palace were stolen in 1860 and brought to England. One dog was gifted to Queen Victoria of England, and she names hers Ludi. She gives the other four away to other royal families. This made the dogs known as royal dogs and very popular to show people that you were almost like royalty. These dogs were lion-like very dignified, and very strong-minded. So whoever put the dog on this fan, what they wanted to tell people was that they were like the Pekingese. They were royal, dignified, strong-minded, and as tough as a lion. Alrighty, everybody, let's make one of these fans at home. What you're going to need is some markers or colored pencils or crayons, anything that you like to use to color at home. Let's grab it. And then some paper. I have some scraps of pink paper left over. I have some white paper. Whatever you have, grab. Now we have to pick what kind of animal we want to draw. On our fan in the collection, there was a dog. I don't know if I'm very good at drawing dogs, so I think maybe I'm going to choose to draw a fish. And you can pick any color that you want to do. I'm going to start with orange. Now, with my orange, let's get started. I think I'm going to draw one big fish right in the middle. And remember, you're going to want to have your paper the long way just like this and the short way like that. Here is my fish and I think my fish needs an eye and maybe some stripes. I don't want it to be lonely. So maybe I'll draw another fish. Hmm. Adding more fish, as many fish as I want. Maybe a tiny little baby fish and some eyes. And then you get to color it in however you want. I'm going to color this one in with squiggly lines. And this one in with polka dots. I'm going to give these fish blue eyes. And this fish, I'll color the whole thing in blue. And maybe this guy in yellow. Hmm, I'm feeling like my fish might need a little fancy top up here. Ooh. And a fancy bottom. And color it in. And then 
then I want to make sure that everybody knows that my fish is underwater. So one thing that you can do is draw little bubbles to make your fish look like it's underwater. And bubbles rise to the surface. So you want to draw them up. And maybe I should add some seaweed. Color it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just having fun making a fan. And maybe I'll do like seaweed like this, different kinds of seaweed. We'll go back to this. Color it in. I'll add some more over here. I'm going to do it in green. Add some more of the green in. A different green. And look, there's my picture. Now we're going to fold it like a fan. We're gonna go on the short side here and we're gonna fold it back and forth like an accordion. So you're gonna fold it in and press the paper down. Flip your paper over. Fold it back. Press your paper down. Back to the front. Fold it in. Press that line down and go back and forth like this until you're finished holding your fan. Ta-da! Finished. You're going to grab the bottom and you're going to open your fan up. Ta-da, there you go. There's your fan in action.